Hello, I'm Reza Rad from Radacad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the Power BI administrator configurations, such as the admin portal, tenant settings, some of the important configurations that you need to be aware of, where to set them, what is the recommended configuration for them. Let's go and check it out. Power BI tenant, uh, you can have someone as a Power BI administrator. There is always a Power BI administrator in the tenant. By default, the Power BI administrator is Office 365 administrator. Um, but um, it is also possible to have someone only as the Power BI administrator. To do that, um, the Office 365 admin should log in to Power BI, I'm sorry, to the Office 365 admin portal, uh, then under active users, go and select a user, under manage roles, there's a place that you can expand to show roles by category, and there's a role for Power BI administrator. There are also roles for Power Platform Administrator if you want to combine these two. But Power BI Administrator basically gives all the accesses needed for administra uh, administration of the tenant of the Power BI. Uh, then the next step is that if someone is the Power BI Administrator, they can go to the Power BI website. Mm, so we are talking about Power BI service configuration because Power BI Desktop itself has some settings as well. Those are more related to the developer. Power BI website settings, uh, especially on the admin side, they are related to uh, the Power BI administrator. So as a Power BI administrator, I can go to the setting icon over here and then under the admin portal. Now, admin portal is accessible by anyone in the organization. Even if I'm not a Power BI administrator, I would be able to come to the admin portal. But if I'm not an administrator, I would have only a few options, such as capacity settings. I wouldn't see all of these other options. Most of these are for um, the Power BI administrator only. Um, so the most important part of it is the tenant settings. And uh, there are a lot of things you can set up, as you see here, uh, lots of options for tenant settings. Actually, the first time that Power BI was uh, published, we didn't have these many options. As we have new features, new functionalities added to the Power BI, we have more settings and options over here, uh, which also shows how um, how much this product grow through uh, these years. Uh, so let's talk about some of these, not every one of these, but uh, some of those that are quite important to set. For example, uh, the first one that uh, you might consider setting is the help and setting, uh, help and support setting options. If I'm a Power BI user within your organization and I have some questions, uh, there should be a place here that I can go to, let's say, a FAQ page, to a wiki page, to get some guides. There is a help um, button over here, but this usually uh, sends people to some of the generic Microsoft documentation, forums, and things like that. You can go to the publish get help information, enable it, and then set your own URLs, which is quite a good thing to do, especially if you have a, um, let's say, SharePoint site for some training documentation, for a forum that people can go and ask questions, like a help desk contact information URL and things like that. You can set it up here, and when you set it up, then this will be um, replaced by that, so they will get your um, documentation which is more specific for their use case rather than generic Power BI documentation. Most of the settings in the tenant settings can be applied either to the entire organization or a specific group of people. Um, and this is valid for most of the places. Uh, other things in here are mostly related to like notifications, uh, allowing um, Power BI users to use some of the paid features and see how this works. Uh, these are usually good options um, as, as the default settings for them, uh, except the publish get help that I would recommend you to enable it and use your own uh, configurations under that. Um, workspace setting. Now you can um, enable everyone to create workspaces within an organization, but that is not a good option. So I would suggest as one of 
the options that you need to control as an admin to give this option only for a specific group of people, the Power BI developer group or the BI group or data analytics group, whatever you call it, that group uh, is better to have control of creating workspace. Otherwise you will have tons of different workspaces everywhere. Um, the usage of data, uh, data set across workspaces is usually a good thing. I would highly recommend that because that means that people can use shared data set, reuse some of the um, work that has been already done rather than creating it. Um, the rest is related to upgrading workspaces, which um, might not be valid for everyone. You might have already the workspace upgraded because there was workspace version one, version two. Um, these days, when you create a workspace, it would be always version two workspace. Uh, everything in the information protection area, these are all related to sensitivity labels that work specifically with Microsoft Purview. Uh, so if you, if you want to enable it, you have to enable it. Um, you have to use Microsoft Purview. It has its own licensing settings. You have to go to protection metrics, set some prerequisites for that. Uh, it's a fantastic thing to use, but it's not for every organization. Some organizations are using it and for that they are paying for that feature separately and there are settings related to that. Uh, then we have quite a lot of settings and options for exports and sharing, and this includes pretty much anything. It can be from export to CSV or export to Excel, all the way down to like um, using it in a PowerPoint presentation and things like that. The first four options here are quite important for you if you want to consider sharing Power BI content with people outside of your organization. You might want to allow it or you might want to say, no, I would disable it. Um, and um, do you want to be able to, intern to invite those users right here from Power BI or you want them to be first added to uh, Active Directory as a guest user uh, and then manage it over here? Do you give them ability to go and manage and edit your content in within your tenant as well or not. So these are all settings related to that. Uh, now, um, this option, which is, I would say, perhaps one of the most important options to set in the tenant settings is uh, publish to web. So publish to web is the ability to create a public link for your report. And that public link would be valid everywhere, would be valid for everyone. Users don't need to have Power BI account, they don't need to be part of your organizations. Anyone with that link would be able to see that report. It's not a good option for, um, for confidential data or for organizational data. It is only good for public data. Uh, so as you can imagine, it is quite important option to be controlled. Not everyone should be able to do that. Not everyone should be able to publish to web. You want this option only to be valid for a very specific group of people. Even within the BI team, you might only enable it for a very few number of people who actually know what they are doing. Uh, there's a place that you can go and actually see the, all of those that are published to web and if it is something that you don't want, you can turn it off and things like that. But this is an important setting. You want to control it. You want to only uh, make it available for a specific group of people. Um, as I said, there are uh, quite a lot of options for copy paste visuals, export to CSV, Excel, downloading reports, allowing live connections is a good option to be on. Uh, all of these export options are really good to be uh, available. Uh, there is an option further down for allowing direct query connection to Power BI dataset, which gives you the ability to create a chained dataset in Power BI, which means that you get part of data from this dataset, part of it from another dataset. I have explained that in another video and article. Um, uh, and one of those that are quite important in here is certification. Now certification, which I explained that in another video a little bit later, is the ability to, um, to mark your content. Let's say you have Power BI content, you want to mark it as a gold content, silver content, bronze content, in a way that the gold content is considered as a fully tested, uh, quality controlled, so that everyone can go and use it with peace of mind. Uh, versus the other two options are not like that. Now in Power BI we have a different term for that. We have a term for certific. We have a term for that called certification and endorsement. You can 
um, endorse your Power BI content to be promoted, and then the highest level is certified. Uh, it is important that only a specific group of people can do that because then you need to have a process for certifying your Power BI content, let's say a checklist, people go and see, for example, has this been using some of the Power BI shared data sets that you already have, or uh, does it follow the right practice to create the report or data sets or things like that. So it is important to, uh, to have this only for a specific group of people. As I said, it's a big concept, uh, we'll talk about it in uh, a different video. Uh, there are some options here to, um, to allow you to integrate with Microsoft Teams, with PowerPoint. Uh, discovery settings is also related to the certification. Um, you usually want your content to be discoverable, the certified content specifically. Uh, so these are usually things that we leave it enabled. Uh, content pack and app settings. These are settings related to the sharing of uh, Power BI content using content pack and app. Now content pack is an old method, not used anymore, but the Power BI app used quite a lot um, to, to sh share the content of a workspace with uh, users. Uh, one of the important options here that you can enable is push app to end users because this gives ability to the end users to immediately get the app instead of uh, each of them going and installing the app themselves. Um, there are some integration settings. Most important of those I would say is XMLA configuration. XMLA settings or XMLA endpoint will give ability uh, to connect to your Power BI datasets up into the cloud um, using third-party tools like DAX Studio, Tabular Editor, Power BI Helper, even SQL Server Management Studio, Visual Studio, all of these can connect there. And then as a result, you can build a better data model because some of these tools have some features that enables you to uh, improve your data model. Um, there are options for some of the services you can use, such as ArcGIS map, even Azure map, the Power BI field map, or you know, the normal map, because some of these are using um, servers in a specific locations in the world, the map data will be processed over there. So you need to like be aware of this option and enable it only if you are happy with that. When I say you, I mean, from your organization point of view. Uh, same for using single sign-on for Snowflake, Redshift, Google BigQuery, those settings can be applied over here. Uh, in terms of Power BI visuals, you can create custom visuals in Power BI. Custom visuals are visuals that you, either you or someone in the community goes and build a visual, and these visuals can be really interesting visuals. Uh, now, because these visuals can be developed by anyone um, and they can then list it as a Power BI visual gallery, um, you might want to restrict that. You might say, well, not um, people can't use custom visuals. They cannot download custom visuals. Or, or you might say only certified custom visuals are uh, possible to be seen. Certified custom visuals have been through a little bit more process than a normal visual. Uh, R and Python visuals are also another set of visuals you can use. These are not necessarily custom visuals, but these are visuals that you can use to get some really interesting uh, information. For example, Layla has a big series of time series uh, analysis with R visual. It's, I think, over 13 articles talking about all different configurations of uh, R that gives you really interesting time series that you can't get it with the normal line chart or the normal forecasting in uh, Power BI visuals. Uh, the important thing, however, to consider with R and Python visuals is that you need to have personal gateway for those, uh, which sometimes can be a challenge for some of the organizations. They don't want to have the personal gateway. Um, Power BI gives you ability to have some auditing and usage metrics uh, result in Power BI. So uh, audit of Power BI would log pretty much everything that happens in the uh, Power BI user base, like users published something, view the report, consume this dashboard in a mobile app. Uh, that log then will be used uh, to create something called usage metrics. This usage metrics is really good for content creator because then they would get an idea of how is the usage of the report are, is someone really using it or not? They can even have per data 
uh, usage metrics enabled so that they can see who actually used it most and they get to that person and get feedback from that person. Uh, so these are usually good options to be enabled. Um, as I said, I'm not going to explain every one of these, but there are a few of these that would be important. Developer settings and admin, admin API settings. These are features that enables developers to do some work with Power BI, for example, embed Power BI report in the application or uh, write some PowerShell scripts that interact with some of the Power BI objects in the uh, in the website and automate some of the administration process, for example, create a deployment flow or things like that. These can be enabled for a specific group of people. Uh, so consider uh, looking into these. Um, there are also a lot of um, settings and configurations for specific uh, components, for example, data flow, the use or create of data flow, you might enable or disable it, which I would definitely suggest using it because it would enhance your um, Power BI architecture or the data mart or uh, template app or any of these new functionalities and settings. You see a lot of preview options in here, down here as well. Uh, so in addition to the tenant settings, the admin portal also have a few other things. For example, there is a usage matrix here that gives you a good view of uh, of your entire organization's uh, number of reports, dashboards, data sets, who use these most. Um, this is across the whole tenant. It is different from the usage metrics that you get in a dashboard or in a, uh, in a report. Now, this usage metrics, however, is not really customizable. I have uh, another video that explained in detail how you can create your own usage metrics, uh, which is fully customizable. It's not a complicated process to do. It's a set of PowerShell scripts that you run, you export the usage met uh, the audits data, and you build a Power BI report on top of it. Um, other options here, you can set premium co configurations. Um, the Embed code is another important piece here. Uh, if you remember, I said that published to web, there's a place that you can go and see all the reports that are already published to web publicly available. This is the place that you can go and see it, even if it is something you did not create because you are a Power BI administrator, you, Power BI administrator, you can go and see it. And then you have the options to go and view it on the web, which would show you that report or delete, which will not really delete the report, it will delete the link to that report. Um, sometimes um, in some organizations, you want to only allow specific custom visuals, perhaps those visuals that may be even developed internally within your organization. You have a developer who has created the custom visual. Now you want to add that visual in here so that when someone go to the Power BI desktop, they add uh, a Power BI visual, they have this option to choose from organizational visuals. Uh, and those are then visuals that you would support more often, um, which would be then easier to find for the users. Azure connections, some of these are related mostly to usage of data flows or some of those objects, for example, creating external data flows that works with uh, your own Azure Data Lake subscription. Uh, in the workspace section, you'll see the list of workspaces. All the workspaces within your Power BI tenant, um, are they part of a premium capacity or not? Uh, some, some details about it. If you want to do some custom branding in Power BI, like what you see in my uh, configuration here, I have my logo, a special background color. You can set it up in the custom branding in here, and it's quite easy to set up. Protection metrics is again related to the, um, to the information um, protection, which is part of the purview. So as I said, I'm not going to talk about every single one of these, but these are some of the important configurations that administrator can set using admin portal or tenant settings, uh, and it can help to set your um, tenant in a right way so that you are sure that the data is not leaking out and everyone who should be doing that thing have the access to do that option. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you.